Eyewitness News is next. And coming up, she's only 17, but she is accused of a very adult crime, pulling the trigger on the wife of her 38-year-old lover. We'll have the story. This is Channel 7 Eyewitness News with Bill Butel and Susan Rosgen, Scott Clark with sports, Sam Champion with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast, and the Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News. It started as a summer romance when she was just 15. Tonight, she's behind bars accused of trying to murder the wife of her 38-year-old lover. Good evening. Bill Butel is off tonight. I'm Greg Hurst. And I'm Susan Rosgen. It's a tragic triangle. A Long Island teenager drawn to an older man, a married man. Nassau County police say it was a secret affair that went from passion to rage. And when the bullets started flying, the wife was the first to know. Taffy Phillips has the story from Massapequa. No one answered the door at the Buttafuoco home tonight, and visitors were unwilling to talk. But neighbors were still talking about the bizarre shooting of Mary Jo Buttafuoco and the arrest of 17-year-old Amy Fisher. You hear like, oh, these drive-by shootings and everything. But then when you find out it's just like one incident, then, you know, it makes you feel better about that. I thought it was a jolted lover kind of thing in this kind of neighborhood. The shooting's real rare. Any kind of violence is pretty rare here because it's a really quiet neighborhood. Police say Fisher, a high school senior, was having an affair with Mary Jo's husband, Joe Buttafuoco. They apparently met a year and a half ago at the Baldwin Auto Body Shop Buttafuoco owns when Fisher's parents went there to have some work done. She became involved in a uh, sexual affair with him about a year ago. Joseph Buttafuoco was attempting to walk away from that affair recently and Amy Fisher had an infatuation with him. That led us to the incident that occurred on Tuesday afternoon. Police say Fisher walked up to the Buttafuoco home and shot Mary Jo once in the head. Neighbors told police they saw her sitting with a man in a dark colored car shortly before the shooting. And police are still trying to determine how she got the gun. Amy was identified when Mary Jo awoke from her coma and told police what happened. Amy Fisher has been charged with attempted murder and is being held tonight without bail. Police say they expect to make at least one more arrest in this case, and that could very well be the man who was seen driving Amy Fisher to the Buttafuoco's home. In Mineola, Taffy Phillips, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And tonight, the wife, Mary Jo Buttafuoco, is in critical condition at Nassau County Medical Center. Mary Jo Butafuquo is still in the hospital tonight, recovering from a gunshot wound to the face. And tonight, Nassau County police are still searching for an accomplice to the love-smitten teenager who allegedly shot her. Police believe another teenager drove 17-year-old Amy Fisher to a home in Long Island where Butafuquo was shot. Police have charged Fisher in that shooting. They say Fisher was having an affair with Butafuquo's husband. Police are also trying to find the person who sold Fisher the gun. The 17-year-old Long Island girl charged with shooting her, lo her lover's wife is not cooperating with Nassau County Police. They're looking for her alleged accomplice, but police say Amy Fisher of South Merrick will not tell them who drove her to the home of Mary Jo Buttafuoco last Tuesday. That's when the teenager allegedly shot Mrs. Buttafuoco in the head, critically wounding her. Police say it was a crime of passion triggered by Joseph Buttafuoco's attempt to end his two-year affair with Fisher. Good afternoon, I'm Greg Hurst. Tonight, who's to blame for a dangerous love affair? 17-year-old Amy Fisher was in court today accused of shooting her lover's wife. The defense describes her as an innocent victim. The prosecution paints a much different picture. Plus, new allegations fly in court that make an unbelievable story even more difficult to understand. And these exclusive pictures of the victim, Mary Jo Buttafuoco, a cap covering the bandages of a bullet wound, walking with her husband, outside their Long Island home. N.J. Burkett is live with the latest. Greg, after a contentious arraignment this morning, she is being held tonight on $2 million bail. The defense is fighting at this very hour to get that bail lowered, but so far, no luck. And it appears, at least for now, that Amy Fisher will spend her 12th night here being held very... Amy Fisher looked absolutely terrified as sheriff's deputies rushed her past a gauntlet of photographers. In court, she appeared drawn and exhausted. And as her parents watched from the front row, she pleaded not guilty to charges of attempted murder. Then, when asked by the judge whether she should be released on bail, the prosecutor unleashed a merciless attack on Amy Fisher, a 15-minute tirade that sounded more like a summation. 
To call her a 17-year-old girl who lives at home and goes to high school, said Assistant DA Fred Klein, is as accurate as calling John Gotti a businessman who lives in New York City. I can't imagine a worse bail risk. Klein said Amy Fisher had been planning the crime for nine months, staking out the Buttafuoco's home more than a dozen times, and once even aborted her plans at the last minute when she couldn't lure Mary Jo Buttafuoco outside. On May 19th, he says, she succeeded, but failed in her murder attempt. But Klein told the judge that the only wound the victim had was a bullet in her head. Klein said at least three men have identified Amy Fisher as a prostitute. The defense waited its turn, then took on the prosecutor. He knows full well who put her into prostitution, said Eric Nyberg. Mr. Buttafuoco is the pimp who put her in the damned business, he said. I find it grotesque. The defense insists that the victim's husband, Joseph Buttafuoco, had ties to the ABBA escort service, where Amy Fisher began working last year. The Buttafuoco's attend daily rehabilitation sessions. Eyewitness News has learned that Mary Jo Buttafuoco is standing by her husband who would speak only of his wife's recovery. Recovering, thank God. Not totally, but it's going to be a long road. Yeah. The judge set bail at $2 million. Emmy Fisher's attorney said she fears Joseph Buttafuoco. When asked why, he paused for several seconds and said this. She's a potential link between his freedom or lack of freedom. The defense is hinting that somehow Joseph Buttafuoco is involved in his wife's shooting. More on that on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock tonight. For now, we're live at the Nassau County Jail, East Meadow, Long Island, where Amy Fisher is being held on $2 million bail. N.J. Burke at Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And it was exactly two weeks ago that Mary Jo Buttafuoco was shot and wounded, allegedly by Amy Fisher. It's frightening that one person can do so much damage, so much damage. It's frightening. Mary Jo Buttafuoco, angry and outraged as Amy Fisher leaves court on bail and with a plea bargain deal to trim years off her prison term. Good evening, everybody. I'm Roz Abrams. And I'm Greg Hurst. Bill and Diana are off tonight. Dan, we begin with a done deal. The high school girl who admits shooting a Long Island housewife will pay for her crime of passion with years behind bars. And now Amy Fisher is said to be turning against her alleged lover. But will that make Joseph Buttafuoco the next target for prosecutors investigating his wife's shooting and alleged involvement with an underage girl? N.J. Burkett has details. I want to know if this was an accident. Tonight, four months yeah, after the gunshot, the hours after the plea bargain, Mary Jo Buttafuoco is bitter, angry at allegations against her husband, furious that the DA appears to be taking them seriously. This girl is an attempted murderer, a liar, a prostitute, and the DA is accepting her statement that she and Joe were together. Something's wrong here, something's real wrong. It all began with a stunning confession. Amy Fisher, in her own words, for the first time. I went up to her doorstep with a loaded gun in my pocket I proceeded to talk to Mrs. Buttafuoco for approximately 10 to 15 minutes, at which time she turned around to walk away. I hit her on the back of the head. I went to hit her again, and the gun went off. I guess, obviously, I, I shot it. Amy Fisher was emotionless, almost matter of fact, which was perhaps more chilling than the confession itself. She fell on top of me on the ground. I tried to get her off of me. I hit her. I think twice, and I left. I ran away. Is there any question in your mind to whether you wish to plead guilty? No, Your Honor. Come on, come on, come on. Back up, fellas. Back up. Seconds later, pandemonium outside the courthouse. Amy Fisher and her lawyer rushed out a side door. Her parents pushed their way past a crush of photographers in a daze. Amy Fisher had been charged with attempted murder, facing up to 25 years in jail. Guilty plea to reckless assault carries a minimum of five, a maximum of 15. Tonight, the case has taken on a whole new dimension. Sources say she is prepared now to offer grand jury testimony that covers not only statutory rape charges, but allegations that Joseph Buttafuoco was an accomplice in the shooting of his own wife. Well, we're investigating anything that he uh, might have had to do or, or responsibility for the shooting of his wife, whether that involved 
having an affair with uh, Ms. Fisher, whether it involved uh, more significant conduct on his part. Although Joseph Buttafuoco refused reporters' questions tonight, his wife angrily defended him. I'm not going to let this one person destroy our lives. I'm the system. I'll fight this system. I will fight it tooth and nail. When asked tonight whether she still feared Amy Fisher, Mary Jo Buttafuoco told reporters, quote, I'm starting to get afraid of what I might do to Amy Fisher. Never mind, she said, what Amy Fisher is going to do to me. Evidence on the statutory rape allegations, including Amy Fisher's testimony, could go to the grand jury, we're told, at any time. From the Nassau County Courthouse, Mineola, Long Island, N.J. Burkett, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. In the meantime, Amy Fisher remains free on bail. She will be sentenced December 1st, and she must serve a minimum of five years in prison.